Psalm 37, verses 3 to 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Let us stand up and open our hymn books to sing the opening hymn, Trust and Obey, hymn 3 to 3. afternoon to congregate for the glory of thy name, for the praise and worship of thee, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, that you continue to lead us and to shower us, to help us to continue to trust and obey in thee, for there is no other way, O Lord, to be happy in Jesus but to trust and to obey. We thank you, O Lord, for the life that you have given us. Thank you, O Lord, for the sacrifice of thy Son, giving us, O Lord, the gift of faith a gift of salvation and to truly believe in thy Son, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed so much greatly for us, O Lord, so that our sins may be forgiven and washed away through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day was resurrected, O Lord, and seated at the right hand of the Father, according to thy holy scriptures. We thank thee, O Lord, for this gospel truth. For giving us the knowledge, O Lord, to, that we will have that eternity, eternal life with Thee, through believing and having that faith in Thy Son, O Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless each and every one of us here as we continue to praise Thee and worship Thee in spirit and in truth, even through the singing of the hymns 
and even for all the messages, O oh Lord, that we will hear, and we pray that we will meditatively receive thy words truly in our hearts and apply them in our daily lives. So hear us, O oh Lord, for we grant that we pray that you will be with us to guide us and to always have that attentive heart to listen to thy word, to provide us with a righteous heart, O oh Lord, so that we can approach thy holy presence. Lord, we do give thee thanks and praise in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. service. This was also our responsive reading this morning. So let us um, read this responsibly from uh, verses 1 to verse 10. And I shall begin in verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have been Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he is ready to be served, and yet verily his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. We should make heaven and earth, the sea, and all the various, which achieve the truth forever. Which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord visiteth them that are all out, the Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the reading of his most holy word. In response, let us open our hymn to hymn 320. And let us sing this, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let us sing this, be full of praise and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ.
Lord for the wonderful singing. Blessed afternoon to each and everyone. Welcome to the Filipino Bible Fellowship. Our guests here. Um, now let us come to our memory verses. So let us read these twice, and after that we will try to memorize verse 14 only for this uh, Psalm 51. So, <clears throat> just below here, Psalm 51. So let us read this um, twice to familiarize, familiarize ourselves. So ready? Let's start. Psalm, Psalm 51, 51 verses 14 to 15. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of Thy righteousness. O Lord, open Thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth Thy grace. Psalm 51, verses 14 to 15. Let us read this once again. Psalm 41, 51, verses 14 to 15. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of Thy righteousness. O Lord, open Thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth Thy grace. Psalm 51, verses 14 to 15. So this passage, let us try to memorize verse 14 only. Verse 14, we don't need to read the scripture reference, uh, text reference, so let, let's just memorize. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. So I'll give you just a short few seconds only to try and memorize this. Okay, let us try to memorize this. Let's try to memorize this twice. <clears throat> no need to read the scripture reference text. Okay, let us memorize. Ready? Start. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. So let us try to memorize once again. If you cannot memorize, you can glance from time to time. Okay, ready? Start. Deliver me from blood, blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Let us start to back for our appointments of the week. Remember, for December 22 and 29, we will have a Christmas Gospel meeting on December 22nd and December 29th for our New Year's uh, <clears throat> service. So do uh, invite um, many of your Filipino friends, or even Singaporeans as well, locals, or even from other nationalities, that they can come and join us on the 22nd and on the 29th. And also, um, E-Band always uh, every Lord's Day, every Sunday, so we will gather at the back of RELC at 12.30 in the afternoon. And also today we will have our group prayer meetings. So this afternoon, um, you know your, your group, your groupings? So yeah, we will have our groupings, so the men we will have our own uh, separate grouping after this. So we can join and also we can ask if you have any further prayer requests or concerns. You can you can ask your uh, your group leaders to pray for this. So <clears throat> thank thank the Lord for the labor of love. Our greeters, uh, sisters, generals, and Melji, and also for refreshments will be Atimela and Gigi and Gigi. So anyone can help. Also inside is um, oh, <clears throat> these my testimonial greetings from um, the Christian Bible Fellowship. 
their first year anniversary. So I do read this for encouragement as well, and even for the, I have the report missions work in Cebu City last November 9th when I went back for for mission trip. So I, please do pray for my family, especially as I'll be coming back home also this December 28th to 5th of January. Pray that I will have another time, another session, so that I can we can have a study of God's word. Um, please pray also for me, for for the message that I will I will preach to my for my family. So okay, let's have now in a time of our offering. <clears throat> Do take note that this is a privilege for believers. If you do not understand and do not believe in the value of this uh, offering. Uh, please do not uh, do so. So um, let us open our hymnals to hymn 304. I am trusting the Lord Jesus. Hymn 304. blessings that we receive, material and spiritual blessings, we do give back a portion of these blessings unto thee, O Lord, for these funds. Pray, O Lord, that you use these funds mightily, even for the preaching and the furtherance of thy kingdom. We pray, O Lord, that you will be used for many missions work back in the Philippines and even in other countries, even also in Japan, O Lord, and even here in Singapore. We do pray, O Lord, and give thee thanks that you have enabled us to give us our tithes and offerings. And we do give this heartily, O Lord, for we know that you love the cheerful giver and may you provide blessings to each and every one of us. Lord, we do pray that also for the different missions work in, back in the Philippines, we pray that these uh, churches that you have um, brought up, O Lord, that they will continue on even until the very end, even until the coming of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that many people will be showered and will receive of thy words, receive of thy goodness, 
receive of the bountiful blessings and thy grace, O oh Lord, that they too might be saved. We pray also, Lord, uh, that for those who are not here with us, we pray that you provide them with guidance, provide them with safety, provide them with good health. And we pray that if those who are still um, sick or those who are not here are able to come with us and join us because of their health, O oh Lord, we pray that you will provide them with good health and nurse them back to good health. For we know that thou art the Lord who can provide healing, O oh Lord. You are the great physician and thou art the one who can provide healing both physically and also spiritually. So we pray, O oh Lord, that you will provide um, healing to these people. Provide us also with thy guidance and also with the nourishment of thy word as we come to hear of the message this afternoon, O oh Lord, provide us with hearts attentive, with ears and eyes, be alert to receive thy words and to acknowledge them and apply them in our daily lives. Provide us with hearts, O oh Lord, um, hearts that will continue to be passionate and to continue to be zealous to serve thee even in the hearing and meditation of thy word. Provide guidance as well to our brother Samuel Go, who will be preaching to us this afternoon. Provide him with utterance of the Holy Spirit and provide him with much courage and boldness to speak thy word of truth so that we may know thee and we will be drawn much more closer to thee. So Lord, this we ask and pray with much thanksgiving in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this afternoon we will have our scripture text will be from Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 10 and the message will be Biblical Trust. Our feature for this afternoon is Brother Samuel Go. May I ask Brother Samuel? and long life, and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honour the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out new wine. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his holy word. Join me as I pray once again. Father, we do thank thee for giving us thy words of life in the scripture to make us wise unto salvation, and also wise to navigate through our life on earth. We pray that you may teach us to bring glory to thy name and to let thee be the sole occupant of our heart. Please forgive us for our sins, instruct us in thy word. May thy Holy Spirit assist us to bring about true 
and lasting transformation in our lives, to be more and more like Christ, to love the things He loved, and to hate the things He hated, and to desire the things of God only. And now hear our cry and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So just a general outline of a general analysis of these few verses, like these 10 to 12 verses of Proverbs chapter 3, is that the promises of God are found in the even verses. Verse 2 tells us that God promises life and peace, and then verse 4 tells us favor with God and man. And verse 6 tells us God will direct us. And verse 8, health. And verse 10, feeling. The feeling here has to do with uh, provisions. And verse 12, God's delight. And with the promises, with the blessings, also comes with it instruction. Right? One of the ways to be wise is to be instructed. And why? must we learn about biblical trust because of a few things we are reminded of this world a lot of cheats out there and there is a growing number of people who are victim of scam scams or fraud they promise you easy money or big money in return but first you must give right, send money that a lot of people got cheated because they want to be rich quick. And at the same time, we also understand from life's experience, sometimes we trust the wrong person, or we ourselves get betrayed, we suffer loss, we are hurt. And also, it reminds us of every young person needs guidance. Who better to trust than to trust in the Lord? You know, the, the audience of this admonishment or this instruction is to a son. Right? Why? Why must the father instruct the son? Because the son, when he grows up, he grows up with no experience, no life experience. He grows up with little to no knowledge of how to defend himself, how to survive in this world. And with that, we see that it's very important to teach right, those who are young, those who are simple, to trust in the Lord. Right? Some biblical uh, description of who the simple are. Right? Let's turn to chapter 1, verse 4, Proverbs. Right? We will see that the simple is synonymous to a young man. Right? Of course, in this case, it is to the son. A Solomon's son may not be Rehoboam. It can be a generic. Solomon wants to teach young people in his country. Chapter 1, verse 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Right, simple equates to someone who is young, somebody who is lacking knowledge, right, lacking experience. Then we turn to uh, chapter 7, verse 7. We see again. Right, the combination of simple and young men. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, right, simple ones and you. A young man void of understanding. Right, that's who the simple ones are, void of understanding. And one characteristic of the simple or simple minded is that they believe every opinion. Go to chapter 14, verse 15.
chapter 14, verse 15, it tells us the simple believe of every word. Right? It does not say every word of God, right? which tells us they believe any word from anyone. Right? They can believe God's word, they can also believe the devil's words. They do not have discernment. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Right? The simple believeth every word. They are gullible. They are easily targets of cheats, right? targets of scam. And that's why it's very important to learn about trust. Right? What does the Bible say about trust? It's not that in this life you will never be cheated, but it's very important to get the foundation right. The Bible tells us the object of our trust, right? who to trust? Trust in the Lord, in Jehovah, the God of Israel. Right? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and not trust in the Lord plus someone else, some other gods. Right? The problem today with uh, so called religious harmony. In the past, right, government schools they promote racial harmony, but today they add one more religious harmony. But the thing is, if your religion is the only true and living religion, or the God of your religion is only living and true, then the rest are all false. Then how can you harmonize? That's why it's very important. Right? The Lord is not only the object of your faith, reliance, dependence. He must be your singular trust. He's the only one you trust. And how do we know singular? Right? Because the second part of that verse tells us how to trust. Right? First, who to trust? Right? You don't trust yourself. You don't trust uh, secular <laughs> wisdom, philosophy. Right? Many a times you will run into trouble with the Bible. You trust yourself or you trust in secular uh, philosophy. Right? Take for example, uh, the nearest star is many, many light years away. So when God says he, he created the world in six days, and then there's this question that comes to mind. How can it be? Because in order for the nearest star, the light of the nearest star to reach the earth, it will take many, many, many years, right? billions of years even. So how? Right? If you trust in secular philosophy, you will run into these kind of problems. Well, of course, you must deny that. You must trust in God. Trust in what God says. And you must trust Him alone. That is why the second part says, with all thine heart. All, not some. Right? It's, not, it's not a 50-50. You know, today people do investment Right? If there is this saying, don't put all the eggs into one basket. Right? So you don't put all your savings into one bank account in case something happened to the bank and the bank cannot uh, return you your money. So what do they do? They put some money here, some money there, some money elsewhere. So in case one fail, one of the banks fail, you still have money left. Is that how we trust God? And some people are like that. And they say, oh, I believe in Jesus, I also believe in this God and that God and that God. So that, when I die, I have more chances of going to heaven. But is that how it's supposed to be? No. Right? Solomon says, with all thine heart, with all thine heart, Jehovah alone must be the object of your trust right? with all thine heart and it's not somebody else's heart it's not just your mind intellectually right 
Dr. Jose, he preached about trust before, right, about faith. He gave an illustration of a, what, a tight rope walker, right, a skillful tight rope walker. He can walk on the tight rope many times, no problem. He can even walk with, uh, by carrying some objects. So he asked the, the crowd, how many of you believe that I can carry you and walk this tight road complete and safely until the end? All of them say yes. Then you know what? He asked the next question. How many of you like to try? None of them. One. So how? Right? It's to tell us, right? We know what to trust in our mind. But in real life, we don't really trust, you know, that's to illustrate, we don't really trust in real life. That's why your heart is very important. Right? Do you trust God with your heart? The devil also believed, right? Herod, who wanted to kill Jesus, also believed. Just that his action is wrong. Right? When, when the, the wise men from the East I bring news, Right, uh, Jesus born king of the Jew, right, is to be king of the Jew. Or should I say, he is the king of the Jew. When he heard the news, Herod got panic. Right? He didn't just treat it as all fake news. Right? Who is Jesus? I don't care. He got panic. He believed. He believed in the words. But what did he do? Right? He tell a lie. He say, oh, bring me news of where Jesus is so that I can come and worship him. And then later on, he sought to kill he cannot find, so he ordered all the two-year-old and younger in Bethlehem right, to be killed. And sometimes we want to ask ourselves, do we really believe in God? But thank God for the words over here. It tells us how to believe. Right? How can you show you believe in Jesus? How can you show you believe in the Lord? Right? Firstly is to believe with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Right? So in trusting the Lord, you lean not unto your own understanding. And this is also very important because some Christians, they fail to realize this. I think about how they pray. They, they have, firstly, they have a problem. Then they ask God for help. And they ask God to grant them according to their specific uh, desired solution. But the thing is, sometimes the answer is very simple. Right? You don't really need God to provide for you according to your understanding. Take for example, right? let's say you live in a big house, you drive a car, you own a car, and then you do business, but then your business failed badly. Right? From profiting, now you are in debt. So what do you do? Right? You have a big house, you have a car, and now you are in debt. What do you do? Pray to God, ask God to provide. Correct? At the same time, in your mind, how do you want God to provide? A lot of people, when they face this kind of situation, they ask God to provide by giving them more money to clear their debt. But they fail to realize that the, the easiest solution is really sell your big house, right? buy a smaller house, sell your car, take public transport. Easily. Can be solved easily. But they don't want to downgrade what? Own understanding. They limit God. Right? They, they ask God, oh God, I trust you, trust you, you all my heart. But at the same time, please grant me this according to my ways, according to my understanding. Many a times it's like that it's in the Christian life. Right? They limit God, they treat God as servant rather than Lord. Right? They don't treat God as sovereign, all wise. They don't pray, thy will be done. Right? It actually, in fact, 
when they pray this kind of prayer, they are not really praying that will be done. Right? They want their own will to be done. And by God's grace, I, I had the opportunity to reach out to prisoners every Tuesday. And some of them, they, they got into jail because of uh, poor management of debt. Right? When they are in debt, you know what they do? They borrow money from a licensed money lender from a fee. Right? So you borrow from one, you borrow from another to pay back the first. Then second. Then after that they, they after that borrow from loan sharks, right? Singapore the term is called how long. And they also borrow from a few. Right? But then when they realize they cannot keep on doing that, borrow from another to return to your your creditor. So in that situation, they are desperate. You know what did they do? They try to make a deal with uh, those loan shark, right? Collect that debt collector. So they say, "Okay, I help you." So they do things like vandalism the people's door, or put a lock around the door, take photo, send. And there are some cases where Christian, those, but there's one who called himself Christian. Right? He also ran into debt. And he needed money fast, right? very quickly. So he also do debt collection. And then he set fire in the house. Christian set fire at people's house. Say, oh, no, no, we're not kill. No. But you see, they are not really trusting God. They are leaning in on their own understanding. And sometimes we may like be like that. Right? Do the wrong things and ask God to deliver. And sometimes right, life can be like that. Life example. Right? Take for example, waiting for so long for a life partner. No one seems to be interested. Then what happened? Because non-Christian, uh, have a good sense of humor, it's charming, attractive, and it's kind toward you. Then what happened? Your heart move. So how? You have been praying all this while, but then somehow God allowed the devil to send you an unbeliever. Will you accept it? A lot of people rush for it. They're out, out of desperation. They rush into it. But this at what cost? Disobedience. Right? Disobedience. You know, it's not that God does not use your interests to lead you. Right? Verse 6 tells us, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Right? Everyone has a path to walk. Everyone must walk life's paths. But how do you want to walk it? How do you want to go about your way? You must involve the Lord. Ask God for His help. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. But it's not that God does not use your interests and your likings to lead you. Sometimes He does but not all the time. Take for example, many a times, how a parent or even senior people in the church advise young people for what to study, where to work. They will say, what do you like? Where does your interest lie? Right? But not all the time. Right? In fact, we must ask further, what does God want you to do? What does God want you to do for Him? Right? If you are a Christian, it means that your life belongs to God. True? And if your life belongs to God, it's not what I like, what I want to do in this life. 
but what God wants, where God wants me to be, what God wants me to do in this life for Him. And that would be so different. But if only we understand that, it will be life-changing. We will not be complaining a lot just because we are not in, let's say, the job that we dream of or the, the salary that we hope to have. Right? Simply doing God's will. And just to know God's will and to do God's will, it will erase a lot of murmurings, a lot of complaints. Right? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. This is his promise. Right? Sometimes right, life situation is very uh, difficult, very mysterious as well. Sometimes God wants you to wait, do nothing. Sometimes God wants you to exercise human responsibility, do something. And sometimes God wants you to do both, to wait and then to do something. So how do you know? Not all the time. Right? Not all the time is so clear. But we know in every event, He is there to answer us. He is there to tell us what to do. Right? He will lead us by His Spirit. You know, there was one prophet who think that God will lead him with spectacular wonders, signs and wonders. By the end, God led him with a still small voice as to tell us God's word is sufficient. And you don't need to see big things, you don't need an explosion somewhere, but God, the Holy Spirit, will lead and guide you. That's how God leads. And God leads us according to His word. Never against it, never against his word, but always according to his words. And verse 7 also repeats this, right? How not to trust? Of course, how to trust? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. How not to trust? Right? Don't lean on your own understanding and don't be wise in your own eyes. And be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. But usually, the wisdom that comes from within are carnal and sinful. Imagine someone offend you and you, you are in a higher position. What would you do to the person? You will make life difficult for him and somehow with your power. And especially to the audience of Solomon and the garden world, right? You must know that Proverbs chapter 1 to chapter 9 frequently repeat uh, two kinds of temptation, easy money and easy sex. Right? Easy money and easy sex. Chapter 1 tells us right, about the enticement of sinners, right? Verse 10, chapter 1. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Then they come out with a whole list of arguments. Oh, join us, join us. Right? We will go and kill, we will go and steal, and we will fill ourselves with treasures and all that. Oh, sounds like a wonderful promise. Easy money. Then after that, chapter 5. Now chapter 5 is also a warning against easy sex. Chapter 7 also. Warning against easy sex. Right, how a uh, harlot or loose woman can come and tempt the young, the gullible. So, how? Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You want money? My God knows you need money. But it doesn't mean that you should go and rob, steal, cheat. Right? In those days, how do they cheat? Right? They, they sell things by butter trade. 
And of course, not, not everybody has, not everybody have gold or silver or precious stones. So, we trade uh, maybe one kg of wheat for a sheep, something like that. So, in order to cheat, they play cheat with the balance. Where the balance is, is uh, how to say, not accurate, is in their favor. So, it appears to you it's one kg, but actually it's not. Right, it's something else. Maybe 900 grams, 700 grams. That's how they play cheap. And you as a buyer, you don't have the instrument to double check. That's why it's so easy to cheat in those days. So easy. So easy for cheaters to get away with cheating. Like God says, right? be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fearing God, right? Yes, it's true. Literally, be afraid, be terrified by God. At the same time, it's not that God uh, is not fear of punishment. Right? For Christians, when you fear God, it's never the fear of punishment, but it's fear of displeasing God, making Him upset. Right, imagine if you fear of punishment, it really means that you are not transformed. Why I say this? It's because if a situation presents to you that you can do wrong and will not get punished, right? if your heart is not transformed, you'll say, I will do wrong. I will take the easy way, I will cheat, I will do this. But if our heart is transformed, even though there's no punishment, right, you will do the right thing. You will not do wrong things. Do you know why? Because you love God. You don't want to make Him upset. That is a mark of a true Christian. You don't want to make God upset. It's not about losing salvation. It's not about losing God's blessing. You know, it's not about getting cursed by God or getting punished. And it's about loving God and fearing Him. Fear also tells us about love. And the reason is because if you fear punishment, right, you are guilt-driven. But the thing is, guilt, although it's a uh, quick fix for you to do something, but it cannot sustain you. It can only jumpstart the car to move, but it cannot let the car move for very long. Because if you fail and fail again, you will continue to feel guilty, and guilty, then what happens? You will give up. You will lose the motivation to follow Jesus. That is why guilt it's not the main motivating factor. Love is. And you love God, you will keep His commandments. When you fear God, same thing, depart from evil. So love and fear, right? don't see them as two opposites. See them as working together. Working together to delight in God. I fear the Lord and depart from evil. It's very easy to do evil. You know? Very easy to excuse yourself from doing evil also. You can say, oh, everybody in my country does this thing. Right? Uh, years ago in True Life, we heard of a report that uh, the principal in, in BCA or the academic dean in BCA allows students to cheat. And one, one of the students over there was caught cheating. And you know what the, the academic dean or the principal said? Everybody in my country cheats. Therefore, he allowed his students to cheat. Of course, found out then the, the staff was sacked. So the thing is, because everybody does evil, does it mean you can do evil? You should follow? Right? 
if everybody, if there's a trend that 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 people are doing, right, traveling around naked, will you follow? Will you walk around naked? Of course not, right? Common sense will tell us no. And we, if we can do this, why? Why do we excuse ourselves? Oh, everybody, you know, take for example, uh, marrying an unbeliever or having an unbelieving boyfriend or girlfriend. You know what those people who, who are attached to unbelievers say? They, oh, they say is to evangelize to them uh, their results, you know, good results in, in such cases, uh, some of these cases. Some of the parents over here, when they tell you their, their love story or life story, they say, oh, uh, when, I, when I met my wife, she was an unbeliever and all that. Then after that, through interaction, then after that, God saved her. But the thing is, what's the first obligation? First obligation is always obedience. Even God decided to show mercy in some cases, it doesn't mean He will show mercy in all cases. So fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It doesn't matter whether you can get away with it right, without punishment. and doesn't even matter if everybody in the world does it. You are a Christian. You are supposed to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. You are supposed to be unique and different from the rest of the world. And therefore, we cannot follow the world in their sinful ways, sinful activity. So from these few verses, it tells us, right, trust in the Lord involves what, piety. I don't just give God lip service. Oh, I trust in you. you know, I believe in you. I have faith in you. I rely on you. I depend on you. Right? A lot of people can say that. The devil can also say that and tremble. But in terms of obedience, zero. Right? Herod, obedience, zero. So are, are you like that? Are we giving God lip service only? A lips is important. Confession of faith is important. At the same time, God wants both, right? Lips and deeds. Right? He wants his praises to be sung. I right? sing aloud of thy righteousness, right? In the verse we read earlier on. At the same time, he wants our obedience. He wants us to obey him. then if you obey God, what's the benefit? Think about Israel as a nation first. Right? Israel as a nation under King Solomon's rule. And King Solomon uses God's law to rule the nation. So in some sense, it is theocratic Israel. Right? A nation ruled by God. Even though there's a human agent over there in Solomon. So in this nation, right, if you disobey God, likely you will get yourself into trouble. And you must know God's people, God's covenantal people, Israel, they are married to the land. So their their obedience and God's blessing will be seen physically. Right, if they obey God, God will bless them. They will get. Uh, they will receive prosperity. They will also get health, right? Health and wealth, because they are married to the land. They are a national witness. Right, it's to show to others that if you worship Jehovah, you will not suffer lack. Right, God is good. God will bless. 
his people. But when it comes to a church, it's a little bit different. And we are not married to the land. And the blessings primarily is spiritual only. Right? In Israel, both physical and spiritual blessings. In the church, primarily uh, spiritual only. And so, over here, it tells us okay, if you trust in the Lord, if you depart from evil, what is the result? It shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. Health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. Right? Let's think about the neighbor. Neighbor is the, some call it the belly button. That's where is the external part of you, the right? outer part. What about the bones? And the bones is not outer part. The bones is the structure, so the inner part. So both right, health outside to inside. It tells you complete health. It also tells you both physical and mental well-being. And why is this marrow? Right? Marrow to thy bones. Right? Bones by nature is dry. So marrow to thy bones is means like, literally to water your bones, to nourish your bones, so that your bones can grow and be strong. And this is the benefit. It doesn't mean that there will be no accidents. It doesn't mean that nobody will suffer from broken bones. But generally it is that you don't do bad things. You don't go join gang and go for gang fight. You will not cause yourself unnecessary hurt, unnecessary damage. Right? You follow the Lord, you are kept safe from all these sinful activities and sinful proposals. Many of these sinful activities, sinful proposals, they are life endangering. I think for example, go up to a high place and go and lie down there. And lie down on a narrow narrow platform. It used to be a trap right, called planking. But imagine you fall that will be your death. Or you get hurt. And all this is unnecessary hurt. When you obey God, God will prevent you from unnecessary hurt. So it promises health. Of course, for a Christian, ultimately, is at the resurrection that we get perfect health and life. In verse 9, it tells us, inward piety is important, outward expression of worship is also important. Right? You say, you trust in God, so now, show it. How can you show? Honor the Lord with thy substance. And honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase, and God wants to be honored. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? You must show that you trust God. Right? And God don't tell you to do stupid things or suicidal things, dangerous things. Right? God is wise. At the same time, God uses the little things to test your heart. Honor the Lord with thy substance. But it doesn't mean that God needs uh, you know, God needs money. It doesn't mean that God needs uh, lamb or cattle. It doesn't mean that God is hungry. He owes the cattle of, upon a thousand teeth. Right? And if you think of the man from the east that gave Jesus what, gold, frankincense, and birth. 
Jesus did not keep it all for himself, for his own glory. So a reasonable deduction would be uh, he allowed the, the gifts to be used to travel to Egypt and to live there for a while until the death of Herod. Okay. For practical reasons. But the principle of first obligation is right, God wants you to honor him with your substance. You say you trust God, now can you trust him by giving him a tithe and offering? It's about faith. It's, it's not that God needs money. Right? Some rich people in Singapore who attend church, they, they have this difficulty in understanding this. Why must give God 10%? At least 10%. Why? Why does God need so much money? They don't understand. It's about honoring God. And if you honor God, God will honor you. And before I move to the blessing, I'll talk about the first fruit of all time increase. Why is first fruits? My first fruit is when you first till the ground, plant crops, and harvest time, the first harvest, you reap. You bring back to your storehouse, right? The storehouse is called buns, your, your storeroom. Everything that you collected belongs to God. The first harvest, and that's first fruit. Then of all that increase, means what? Let's say you collected uh, 100 oranges, first time. 100 oranges belongs to God. Second time you collected 120 oranges. So what is the all that increase? What is the first fruit of that increase? What's the extra that you get? 20. Right? That 20 belongs to God. That is what I mean. And that's just first fruits. Before you talk about tithes and offering. So in practical sense, what, what do we do? Right? Uh, young people, when they first get employed, right, the first salary, will uh, usually be returned to God. And that is first fruit. But first fruit of all that increase. Right? The first increment or the first bonus will go back to God. And that is what it means by honoring Him. Then the blessings is, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. But the emphasis is old. Over here in verse 10, it's about feeling. F I L L. God will fill your buds with plenty. And then it also tells us the second part and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. A new wine. Fresh grape juice. Right in those days, the Crops collected will go to the barns and the wine press. Right? Wine press is where they squeeze grapes. Right? Of course, they, they don't squeeze using their hands. They put the grapes on the floor and they step on it. Then the grape juice will flow to jar. Right? They, they have some structure to collect, to make work easier. So that's how they get grape juice. And take note, thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Overflow. Right? God is no man better. If you want to bless you, it's, a, it's an easy thing to do. It can bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Right? At the same time, we must also take note of covetousness. It doesn't mean that God is advertising, right? You want to make a lot of money, please invest. Please, please throw in all your bank savings to the offering so that you will receive maybe a hundredfold. Right? Some people think that way. Right? They treat the church as an investment because of all these statements. Yes, God can bless you with more. 
than what you give. At the same time, it, the blessings that God blesses you with may not be in dollars and cents. Sometimes it can be things money cannot buy. Take for example an emergency situation, right? In, in event of emergencies, you are willing to part with any amount of money for your solution. But somehow, when you pray to God, God gives you a solution free of charge. Don't you think so? That provision of God in the greatest time of need worth more than your bank account? Definitely. Right? So sometimes, it's not about material. And you must know the emphasis in these verses is not about me, it's not about my possessions, it's not how much I will get at the end of the day or get back at the end of the month. It's about trusting in God. Do you trust in God? Do you trust in God according to what God says? According to how the Bible tells us trust is supposed to be. And trust in the Lord okay, with all thy heart tells you to trust Him singularly and also with thy, right, thy heart, thy personally. You must have this personal relationship with God. At the same time, it's not just lip service, but it's also practical. Both in a pious manner, fear the Lord and depart from evil, as well as in the giving of our substance, honouring God with our substance. The main emphasis is really the Lord. It's not me, it's not about my money. And there's one more thing. Trust, right? One more thing that needs to be clarified. Right? You trust in God alone. Does it mean that you don't trust anybody? Right? Does it mean that you don't trust anybody at all? I think, for example, uh, among Christians, you tell me this, or say, I, I don't trust you. What? I only trust the Lord. Does it make sense? Right? The, the preacher comes and preach the word, then you can tell the preacher, I don't trust what you have said. I only trust the Lord. How? Right, it's, it's, does it mean that trusting in the Lord alone means that you don't trust anybody else? Right, we still have to have some form of trust Right? Otherwise, we cannot survive. Right? We cannot buy food. I don't know whether you got food poison in the food or not. See? What it means is that you let God, uh, you rely on God, you trust that God will work out all things for your good. Right? Whether you trust whether your trust is betrayed or not in trusting men. At the same time, right, this trust means that if other people tell you something against God, or you cannot trust them. Right? Sometimes in a church, they like to use God's name in vain. They say, oh, God told me this, God told me that. Then there's one, one man Go and tell a woman, oh, God told me that his will for me is to marry you. Well, the woman supposed, uh, is very smart in her reply. You know, normally people would say, oh really, yeah, okay, let's get married, since it's God's will, right? But the woman replied, but God never told me that it is his will for me to marry you. You see? That's why when other people advise you against the Bible, you cannot take that advice. Uh, 
But if other people advise you according to the Bible, you can trust the person. Right? Same thing over here. Solomon is teaching his child. What's the source of his teaching? God. Right? God is the source of his teaching. At the same time, the child has to trust that Solomon is teaching him the right things. So dear friends, there's really much to reflect upon. Right? Since we are in December, and it's a really closing year for us, have we been faithful to God? Have we been leaning on our own understanding, doing the things according to our ideas? whether to get things done. Right. Perhaps by doing things our way will result in right, uh, more efficiency, but the result, right, by the manner doesn't please God. We have to repent of it. Right? The means does not justify the ends. God is not impressed because God wants both the means and the ends. Right? How you do it and the results, both are important to God. I may not know what situation you are in, but I can tell you right, from these verses, God is absolutely dependable. Absolutely dependable. He's a very present help in time of need. He knows your need before you even ask Him. That's why. And He's more than capable to provide for you what you need. So our duty, trust Him and obey Him. And by obeying Him, right, we will protect ourselves. We will be far from danger. And if we are in a moment of crisis. Do not be panic. Do not react according to your own wisdom. Right? Usually your own wisdom is to do all the things and sometimes those things that propose to your mind are not pleasing to God. I right? should take a moment to trust God, to pray to Him, right? acknowledge Him. He shall direct thy paths. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father in heaven, teach us thy ways, O Lord. Teach us to fear thee and keep thy commandments. And help us to love thee more and more each day. Truly, life is not easy. There are so many people who are so smart that they can even bluff us or cheat us and get away with it. Nevertheless, we pray for thy protection and guidance each step of the way, knowing that we will work all things out for our good to those who love thee and to those who are the court according to thy purpose. Teach us all not to be afraid but to be bold because we trust in thee. Help us to live for thy glory. At the same time, may thou occupy our hearts and help us to really love thee more. Thank thee for thy care for us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And closing last sing this way with thee. Hymn 402. His way with me.
three. Thank you.